Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. That's an E46 BMW behind me. Last couple days I've been getting sort of a, a sporadic misfire condition, particularly on startup. And uh, this finally did set a code. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the code and proceed to diagnose the vehicle. I'll show you the steps I, I usually take to diagnose a misfire. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and check the codes here. So as you can see, we've got a P1348. It says manufacturer defined. So OBD Fusion doesn't actually have an internal database of the, uh, the, the custom codes for each manufacturer. Anything that's like a P1 or two, those are, uh, those are custom codes uh, specific to each manufacturer. So over here, I've actually got a list of all the BMW codes and P1348 is misfire during start cylinder four. So, we know that we've got some problems in cylinder four. I'm gonna go over here, go to the freeze frame. So 1348, we've actually got closed, okay, we're in closed loop. And the engine was not entirely hot yet. And we've actually got 1% fuel trim. And so it's like, it's minus, so it's basically nothing there. And short term, long term, a little bit there, but Basically, yeah, I, I, I don't see any particular problems with fuel trim, so I'm not concerned we have a vacuum leak or uh, anything like that, which is, which is really important because a lean condition um, can actually cause, can and will cause misfire. So I just wanna verify that I don't have a lean condition and I don't. So at this point, I'm going to proceed to uh, take a look at the coils. Okay, so I have removed the microfilter and the microfilter housing. I've removed uh, both engine covers. If you don't know how to do that, check out my common repair steps video. We're looking at the coils here and we suspect that, well, we know there's a problem with, with coil number four, an intermittent problem. Uh, what I want to do is determine if that coil is in fact bad before I just go ahead and throw parts at it because, you know, coils are expensive. You don't just want to throw parts at it. You want to confirm. And there are things you can do. The, the easiest thing that you can do is to just switch that coil with another known good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch number four with number three. The cylinders are numbered. Uh, one is up here, six is back here. So I'm just gonna switch these two. It's really easy. You just pull up on the lock, pull them out, and there are two 10 millimeter bolts. So here's number four. Well, that's interesting little color on it but otherwise looks fine to me this one looks all right so let's go ahead plug that back in okay now what I want to do is erase the codes and then I'm going to start the engine again. I'm going to see if I can get that problem to move to cylinder three. That'll confirm that that coil is bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear our codes. Okay, good. So now I'm going to start the car and see if I can catch this problem again. Yeah, I can feel it missing. Can you guys hear that? Hopefully you can. Yeah, I can just, I can feel it shaking. I can feel the missing. It's not constant, but it's an intermittent. You can see the idle is kind of getting affected. Now it's smoothing out. Okay. Let's go ahead and check and see if any code's been set yet. All right, no codes detected yet. So I think I'm gonna have to go and do a little driving and see if we can get that code to come back. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you some other tests you can do to uh, determine if you uh, have a bad coil and to identify it. So this next test I'm gonna show you is called a cylinder drop test. And this is how you would determine if, uh, if a coil is not contributing at all. So what you're gonna do while the engine's running, you're gonna unplug the coil and you're gonna listen for a change in the engine. You, I, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can definitely hear that there's a misfire now. 
So I'll plug that back in. Idle change again. So cylinder one is fine. And you just repeat this test. So that's a change. Cylinder two is fine. It's a change there on three. So cylinder three is fine. At least it's fine right now. Cylinder four is good. Cylinder five is good. Cylinder six is good. If I unplugged one of those and there was no change in the idle, you've identified uh, definitely a bad cylinder. In which case I would then switch the coil with, a, with an adjacent cylinder that I know was good. And if the problem follows suit, you know you've got a bad coil. In this particular case, uh, we know we're getting codes. Uh, we were getting codes on cylinder four. We just switched the coil over to three. No code has come back yet. The engine's warmed up now, so we can't, you know, our, our uh, intermittent misfire when cold is now gone. That condition's now gone because the engine's warm. So I'll just drive it around for a day or two, wait for the code to come back, and then we will finish up. So check it out guys, I just went for a test drive and the thing started really misfiring regularly. And uh, so I pulled off and I did a power balance test and it actually turned out that the cylinder number two was misfiring, was not contributing. And these are the codes that I got. It, it was enough to actually set a P300 code, which is, you know, random misfires, but regular misfires detected. And then, but it's interesting that there's not a P302 because, you know, it was cylinder number two. That's, that's very interesting. Uh, 1345 actually means cylinder two, but 1349 also means cylinder four. Uh, it means misfire with fuel cutoff. So uh, the fact that a cylinder four code is coming up when we just switched, you know, the bad coil supposedly from four to three, we would have expected it to come back on cylinder three, right? So that's kind of troubling to me right there. I'm, I'm honestly pretty troubled by that one, but that's just, you know, that's the, the codes are one thing. I was actually seeing during my power balance test, I was seeing the cylinder, that cylinder number two was not contributing. So let me see if I can start the car and reproduce that for you. So check this out guys. Cylinder number two, no change. Cylinder number three, there's a change. Back to cylinder number two, no change. So we, now we have a misfire on cylinder number two. Okay guys, it's actually the next day. Uh, it was getting really, really late last night, so I had to call it quits. New day, I haven't touched anything. We're gonna go ahead and start the car up and see where we're at, see if we still have a misfire on cylinder number two. Oh, I hear a misfire. Okay, let's repeat the power balance test. That one's good. I think that one's all right. Okay, that one's contributing. Okay, four. Four is a problem. Let's see if I can get you closer and you can hear this. See that four, no, no response there. Let's do three again. You can hear the change. No change there. Okay. So now number four is our problem, ironically. Let me go shut this thing off. All right, so I think that explains why we have those two codes there. The strange thing is why we were originally getting that code and we switched coils and why that code didn't switch. Uh, but then again, when we did get that code, when I did that power, that first power balance test, all of the, all of them were still working and all of them were still firing. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to, I, I, I want to have this actual proof where I can see that a cylinder is not contributing before I go ahead and switch coils and see if the problem moves. So 
Now that I've got the problem on number four and it's happening right now, I'm gonna switch it with another coil. I'm, this time I'm gonna pick like one. We're gonna switch it with cylinder one and we'll see if it travels, okay? So let me, let me do that real quick. Okay, so now coil number four is on number one, number one coil is on number four. So let's go ahead and start it up, see what we get. Okay, I still hear a misfire. Sort of, not as bad as it was. See, one is contributing now, let's test four. I think four is contributing now. So now we might have just lost our misfire situation. Two is good. Three is good. Five is good. Six is good. Come on, six. Let's go back to one. Yeah, one's good. Well, that's not good. I really wanted that situation to travel. I think I'm going to shut the car off and I'll switch it back just to see if I can reproduce that. All right, so they're switched back. Let's see if we can reproduce. Yeah, I don't hear the misfires now. So again, I think once this thing starts to warm up, the problem starts, starts to go away. So this is particularly difficult. Um, it's really difficult with a problem that seems to go away once the engine starts warming up. I only have a very brief window to try to diagnose things. So where do we proceed from here? Um, I, think, I, I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch the coils back. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna switch the supposedly bad number four back with number one. Switch those two back again. And I think I'm because we had that problem with number two, I'm gonna switch number two with number six. Okay? And I'm, I guess I'll have to wait for the car to cool down again and see what happens tomorrow. See if we can get either problem to jump cylinders. What I'm trying to determine is if it is either of those two coils. Are number two or number four coils bad? That is the assumption right now. If the problem doesn't follow those coils to their new locations, then we have to look at the spark plugs and we have to look at, we could look at fuel injectors. Um, and a third possibility, a third possibility is compression problems, uh, particularly when the car is cold. If we're having issues with compression with those cylinders, uh, that could be causing misfires. If we have clogged up fuel injectors in some way or fuel injectors that are going bad, that aren't firing when they should, that's a problem. Same with spark plugs. So I'm just trying to eliminate each possibility in turn so that I can get to what the actual problem is. If the problem doesn't follow cylinders, now that I know two and four have been bad during tests that I've seen with my own eyes, and I'm not just going based off of DTCs or brief problems that have been caught on startup and so on, uh, now that I know I've seen it happening with my eyes, I know that I suspect that two and four are bad, I can proceed to just systematically eliminate the possibilities. If the problem doesn't travel with the coils when I switch them to different cylinders, then I know to look somewhere else for the problem. All right, just for the record, I have now switched four and one with each other, and then I've now switched two and six with each other. So. I, I expect the bad coils to be one and six at this point. So I'm gonna have to let this thing cool down and in the morning I will check it and hopefully we'll find uh, one and six to be bad. So I can just confirm that I have two bad coils. That would be a really nice end to this. If not, we have some other kind of problem. Okay guys, it's actually been a couple weeks since I did an update on this video. Um, I just realized things were getting a little too long and I needed to just gather more data as I 
uh, did one change or the other and uh, and just started the car over time. So it's been about two and three weeks and I've gathered some more data and I believe that I have the solution at this point. So uh, let's just do a quick recap. At first we swapped coils three and four and then we started to see real problems. We saw problems with two and four. So we swapped coils one and four, and then we swapped coils two and six. And what I saw at this point is that the problem did not follow suit. I didn't see the problem move to cylinder six or cylinder one. I believe I still saw it cropping up on cylinder four. So what I did after that was I just switched all the coils back. I put six and two back with each other. I put one and four back with each other. And then I even put four and three back with each other so that they're back where they started at the very beginning of this video, because I'm confident at this point, it's not the coils because the problem didn't move with the coils. So we're back to where we started, which means that coils scratched off the list. Next, what I did was I did a compression test. Um, I just, I hadn't done a compression test yet, and I was curious as to how the compression was doing in, with my engine. Um, I put that in a separate video. I don't know if it's gonna be out by the time this video comes out, but uh, suffice it to say, compression is not an issue. Uh, compression's low on all the cylinders. I'm at like the bottom end of the service limit, but there, there are no major problems. You know, like the, uh, a problem would be like if you had no compression or if you had like 20 to 40 PSI, that would be a significant loss of compression that would cause misfires. So at this point, compression is not an issue. Now lean condition, took care of that one really early. I just checked fuel trims in my scan tool. Fuel trims indicate that there are no troubles, they're normal, so do not have a lean condition. You'll notice that a lot of these things are the, the, the very things you need in order to have the engine run at all. Like if you're diagnosing a cranking no start condition, you need spark, you need fuel, you need, you know, compression, you need timing, all that stuff. So it's all kind of similar, Obvi you know, basically anything that would make the engine run irregularly, any, any missing vital component um, is actually going to be a problem when it comes to diagnosing a misfire. So timing. Now, I, I don't think that timing is off for the, just because um, once I start the car and it warms up just a little bit, it drives fine, it runs fine, it runs as it has always run for the last two years. So right there, I know that there's, there's no problem with the timing because you know I would feel that driving around. That would, that would cause drivability problems. So timing is out, but you know what? If you are, have misfires and you've just done like a timing belt job or something like that, that's where you need to look because you always want to look at your last job or the last job you just performed, especially if problems crop up right after it. That's usually where your problems lie. So at this point, we're left with two major options, spark plugs or fuel injectors. Um, and you'll notice I've also been approaching this in, in like what's easiest fashion. You know, that's, that's kind of how you want to tackle things. You just start with the easiest thing and eliminate it if you can and then move to the next hardest thing. That's, that just seems to be a logical way to do it for me. So of spark plugs and fuel injectors, which one's the easiest? Spark plugs. So spark plugs are where I went next. And what I did was because we were having continuous problems with two and four, continuously I, can, I, I see those two come up. What I did was I switched the plugs of two and six and four and one. And what I saw happen was the problem moved to number six. Problem moved to number six. So right there, that's really all the evidence I needed. I erased the codes. I, I just, you know, kept doing it over and over again. I, I waited another day, went out driving. Uh, sometimes it would misfire lightly and nothing would happen. You know, no check engine light would come on. The next day, it would kind of misfire regularly. Like I couldn't get it to stop until it warmed up quite a bit check engine light would come on again, number six. Sometimes I would still see a number two code. It would be a pending code, not a, not a, a completed code, um, which, you know, causes a little confusion in this situation because, you know, again, yeah, <laughs> number six spark plug being moved to number two cylinder. Why should that cause the problem? Um, but 
Uh, you know, sometimes when uh, something is causing a misfire, that's actually causing an imbalance in the engine. And that could like, that could cause a situation where an adjacent cylinder could start to misfire, not, not directly adjacent, but a companion cylinder could start to misfire just because of where it is in the, in, in the, uh, and the rotation of the engine and such. So uh, because it's a pending code, I, I tend to think that maybe the engine detected one or two misfire events on that. And so it's really not sure that that is, you know, a problem cylinder, but so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm tending at this point to just ignore the two or not, not focus too heavily on the two. I'm trying to focus in on the fact that the number six spark plug or the number six cylinder is now having regular misfires after I moved spark plugs. So, I'm definitely thinking at this point, spark plugs are the problem. Now, the, the other thing that makes me doubt this is the fact that the plugs are practically new. I replaced them like a year and a half ago. So I think they only have like 10,000 miles on them. So it's strange that the spark plugs would go bad, but I can't really ignore the evidence. You know, um, it moved to number six, confirmed. It happens over and over again. I erase the code and it comes back. So. At this point, I'm zeroing in on the spark plugs. I'm going to go ahead and just replace them. It's only like 35 bucks to get new spark plugs delivered. So I have those. I'm going to replace those. And we're going to see if that solves the problem. The engine's cold. I've let it sit again overnight. It, for the last five days, it has been regularly happening. Every time I start the engine cold, there is a regular misfire. It happens every single time. So I'm confident that if I put new plugs in this and there are no more misfires, it starts up and runs as normal, I have solved the problem. So I'm gonna do that. I'll film that separately because I just wanna have a separate video on how to change your spark plugs. And then we'll come back and do a wrap up. So I just got done changing all the plugs, got brand new plugs in there. So we'll go ahead and fire it up and see what happens. Well, not sure if we can hear it, but there's no misfiring at all. Things running perfectly. So yeah, that is a very strange conclusion to this. I did not think that it would be spark plugs when I started this. I was sure it was gonna be a coil or two. Um, and even when we got down to, this end, to, to the end here, I was pretty sure it was gonna be fuel injectors because the plugs were basically new. They're 10,000 miles on them, maybe, not, not even that. Very strange. I mean, did I just get a bad batch of spark plugs last time or something? I, I don't know. Uh, very strange. They were NGKs. They were the proper type. I, I don't know. But hey, brand new ones seem to have fixed the problem. So I'm happy. Hope this video was interesting. I hope it was, uh, I hope it was helpful. Obviously, you know, if the spark plugs didn't turn out to be the problem, if the problem didn't, didn't follow when I changed just the plugs, then at that point I would have switched fuel injectors from two and six and one and four. And hopefully the problem would have switched at that point. So I hope you can see, uh, the, the logic that I went through, the, the, um, the method that I went through in order to diagnose this problem. And I think if you follow this method, you will be able to diagnose your problem as well. So I hope you learned something. I hope this video was very helpful. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.